And there's been uh, some sort of regulation in this field as well, like Hulu. It's I, I see that there's you know between the studios and the um, stations. Uh, is this something that you actually encounter yourself, or is it is it a different sort of um, you know battle? Uh, you're very well informed, and in fact, I was just uh, uh, looking last night. I'm going to be blogging about it later on today. The FCC just released a study on online video and the trends in online video. Fascinating to see. So FCC, a U.S. Uh, US um, Federal uh, Communications uh, com uh, Commission. Yeah. Um, and some of the things they found were they found that um, 103 million U.S. consumers were watching online television in the month of March. 60 million were watching broadcast television. So over 50 percent, exactly, exactly. Uh, additionally, they, they talk about the rise of these alternative programming channels, et cetera. So that's, we're, we're seeing a time that's very interesting from a regulatory standpoint. The FCC always is very concerned about competition and competitive dynamics. And what they're seeing is they're seeing that there's increased competition with the rise of the IPTV providers like ATT and Verizon. That's a good thing from their perspective. But also the rise of new programming sources is a good thing as well. And what they want to make sure of is they want to make sure that the incumbents the carriers, the Comcasts or the uh, Time Warner cables, et cetera, uh, don't become, or Dish or, or DirecTV, don't become blockers for these new kinds of content getting to consumers. So from a regulatory standpoint, we're actually quite heartened by some of these FCC conclusions. That's excellent, and that's good to know that that's out. And it was just yesterday, did you yeah, say? I just saw it yesterday. I think it probably came out on Friday. Yeah, it's an, F it's an FCC report, and I'm happy to give you the link. That would be great. I mean, and so just to talk about the themes that we've discussed today, I know you have to uh, go down to Silicon Valley, yeah, but <laughs> make it rain, <laughs> Robert, make it rain. <laughs> That's what you got to do. <laughs> you can look beautiful all day, but, you know, you what are you going to do? You got to make money. But, um, you know, the two things that you did uh, talk about today were um, patents and FCC regulation. And I, I think, you know, the – legislation and regulation and the law is really important for entrepreneurs out there, especially in media technology. Um, do you have any tips on navigating through those as, you know, as you grow, as someone out there grows their startup? Yeah, well, I think there's a couple of things. Um, first of all, I think that uh, it's important for entrepreneurs, for, for entrepreneurs like all of us to know that, that the, the Patent and Trademark Office at USPTO.gov actually makes it pretty easy to file patents these days. And I encourage entrepreneurs to take a little bit of time. You can actually self-file through the USPTO. And if you think you have a novel idea, it's a fairly uh, inexpensive way uh, to, to take the first step. And what we're moving to, and this begins next year, is we're moving to a first-to-file world. So it's changing from the way it has been. Uh, to the way uh, way of the future, which means that we're, we, we should all t be very, very careful to quickly move to protect things that we think are novel and pass the, the, the test, the litmus test of what an important patent is. Patents are more and more valu valuable. Now, having said that, that litmus, litmus test for patents is pretty straightforward, and you have to be really careful that you don't sort of imagine yourself above that litmus test. It's very important that it has to be that your concept has to be novel. It's very important that it has to be um, uh, uh, useful. There's a, a number of different tests. So, before you spend too much money, take a real close look at that. But patents do have increased value in today's world, and I think that in, I encourage people to take a look at filing patents on their on their work. And then. If you start to get serious, hire a great patent firm. We've worked with Fenwick and West for 20 years. Fenwick's got a great patent firm. Patent firms are friendly toward entrepreneurs, and if you have a great idea, you'll find somebody that will give you a home there. Um, and then on the regulatory side, I think on the regulatory side, um, I have to say that um, it's interesting working in the U.S. I've worked overseas, and I've worked in the U.S., and I think working in the U.S. is quite a bit different. In the U.S., we tend to invent companies, invent products, invent services despite regulation. We, we, we don't ask for permission, we ask for forgiveness. And YouTube sold for $1.6 billion because they asked for forgiveness, they didn't ask for permission. So I think it's a little bit more um, uh, exciting and there's, uh, there's more opportunities, at least in the media space in the U.S. than there are overseas. Overseas is quite tough. I worked in the U.K. for two years and it's a lot tougher there with some of the privacy regulations, et cetera. Very interesting. Well, what do you say about Spotify starting in the... Uh 
in Sweden, though. Yeah. yeah. Well, Spotify's actually done a great job. They've done an amazing job. We're, we're rolling out some Spotify-like features as well, <laughs> so we like them very much. Um, I don't know the Swedish regulatory environment. I know the UK regulatory environment, and I've worked a little bit in Switzerland and France, and I think that those are, those are also tougher environments from a regulatory standpoint. Um, so I can't really speak to Spotify, although I, I think some of their features are, in, are incredibly exciting. Well, thank you so much, Robert. This was a really good chat with you. And um, if people want to know more about rings.tv, where do they go? They can go to our website, rings.tv, and they can also go to the App Store and download our app uh, for the iPhone and the iPad. And that's at the Apple App Store. Look for rings.tv. Excellent. You. Well, thank you, Robert. A pleasure. Bye.